Welcome, 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 welcome. Can you hear me over the big speakers? You can hear me? Hello, welcome. Thank you for being here this evening. Come in, grab a seat. I had an interesting last 30 minutes of my life. I was trying to empty out the old gasoline from my lawnmower from last season, and that didn't go really well. So I've spent the last 30 minutes cleaning my hands with vinegar. So if anybody would like high fives, I'd be happy to, to give that to you tonight. Once a year, we are honored to host our own kids who have been working really, really hard the last few months as part of the LTC program. LTC stands for Leadership Training for Christ. There's a seminar that happens once a year over Easter weekend in Dallas, and we send a really big group every year. And our kids do an incredible job displaying various leadership skills down in Arlington. Don and Jenny Leftwich, as well as Mindy Cooey, do an incredible job leading the program. And there's dozens and dozens of parents and coaches and volunteers that help them pull this really big event off. And we feel like it's so important that we like to give um, one Sunday night a year to letting the congregation see all the hard work that the, the kids have been doing. And so that's what we're going to do tonight. And so the first thing that you'll hear is you're going to hear from our choruses, first the 6th through 12th grade chorus, then the, or 3rd through 6th grade chorus, and then the 7th through 12th grade chorus. And then after that, you'll see a lot of our sign, signers uh, display their sign language skills. Some of that will be in song, and some of that will be with scripture reading. Uh, last thing I, I, mean, I was supposed to mention is we had quite a few guests this morning, and so on your way out, if you think about it, stop by Information Central and grab a mug in your area and deliver that to a guest who was here this morning. Without further ado, let's turn our attention to the third through sixth grade chorus.
Well, wasn't that great? Great uh, third through sixth grade chorus and then our seventh through twelfth grade. That's, that's quite an age span to get to harmonize, so uh, kudos to their leaders there. We're going to join in some congregational singing now while we have other LTC participants that will sign these songs. So uh, for those on the highest place, come on up. They're not fighting over the highest place. We're, we're just about to sing the highest place. Join with me if you would. We place you on the highest place.
been told what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you left your father and your mother and your homeland and came to live with the people you do not know before. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wing you have come to take refuge. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk, dear Lord, close to all of the LTC students come up on the stage, please. All of our LTC students, come on up. This is year number 16 for Memorial Road to do leadership training for Christ. This has been an outstanding year. As you can see, a lot of outstanding students with great talent in a lot of different areas. These students have been working very, very hard since the first of the year, uh, working on some very, very difficult books. The books of Joshua, Judges, and Ruth are the, the books that they have been learning about, studying, and uh, these kids virtually have memorized most of those books along the way. They've been uh, preparing PowerPoints, writing children's stories, poetry, doing artwork, all of those things prior to going down to Dallas. Next weekend, um, these students will be uh, participating in chorus 
presentation, speech, signing, song leading, puppets, and drama. They've worked very, very hard. Give them uh, your recognition. Those of you that are doing Bible Bowl and Bible Quiz are welcome to leave and go to the summit. The rest of you can sit down. We thank all of you for your support over the years. Uh, you have assisted us in so many ways, and, and we just want to thank you for that. Uh, we'll be taking 110 students and their families, so about 350 or so, will be going down to Dallas next weekend. And we hope that uh, you'll be thinking about us and praying for uh, that group while we are there. Thank you very much. If you would, let's stand while we sing another song before Phil brings us a lesson. <laughs> holy Lord, most holy Lord, you alone are worthy of my praise. Oh, holy Lord, most holy much of a lesson here tonight. I mean, you can't really top what, what we just witnessed. So thank you so much, kids. That was, that was fantastic. You guys did a really, really good job. And we as a, your church family are just thankful for you all and, and appreciative to what you've done. And we sure wish you the best next week uh, at LTC. I'll tell you two of the things I like about the book of Ruth real quick. One is that the book begins with a lot of bad stuff. You got this couple, Naomi and her husband, and they move off to Moab, and then their family goes from two to four when they have these two sons, and then their family goes from four to six when their two sons marry these two beautiful women. And then all in the first seven or eight verses, everything goes from this family of six quickly down to this family of three. The, all, all the men in the family die. And so the book is set with this, with this picture of, of agony and this picture of depression and sadness and in many ways the first chapter is about Naomi and she's just bitter in fact they call her Mara because her name simply means bitter and so in many ways the book is about what what is God going to do to Naomi's pain and a lot of the book what Naomi's actually looking for is she's looking for sons to replace her male uh, her, her husband and her sons because in that time of day or in, in that uh, his, history of, 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 of people you if you're a woman and you didn't have a man or, or sons, you, you were kind of uh, left out to dry. You couldn't get a job. You were going to be poor. And so not only was she grieving the loss of her husband, but economically she was in a pretty bad place. And so a lot of the first two chapters is Naomi wanting these, these men back in her life. Well, what's fascinating is that the end of the book, after Ruth meets Boaz and they have a baby together, Naomi's friends come around her and they start praising God, but it's really interesting if you pay careful attention to what they praise God for. They don't say, they don't say only praise God for, that you now have a, have a grandson. What they actually say is praise God for Ruth, because Ruth is better to you than seven sons. And so what you find at the end of the book is that Naomi, this whole time, thinks that her healing is going to come through finding a son or finding a husband. But God's message to Ruth the whole time was, the blessing I had for you was actually right in front of you the whole time. You thought you wanted 
a male, but really it was, it was Ruth that you needed. And I find that a, that's a pretty good principle for us to realize that God often wants us to bless, God often wants to bless us, but many times it's not exactly the way that we think he's going to bless us. So that's one, that's one reason I really like the book of Ruth. Second reason I really like the book of Ruth is in chapter 2, after Ruth and Naomi come back to Israel, again, they've got nothing. They've got no food, they've got no home, and they're sitting there, and really their only hope is just maybe someone, someone will be kind to them. But I love imagining Ruth getting up when they get back to Israel, having nothing, and saying, you know what, Naomi, I I'm going to go glean in the fields today. See, she had to make a move to receive God's help. And in many ways, at the end of every church service at Memorial Road Church of Christ, that, that's the way we end. We end with an opportunity that if anybody needs help, you can receive it. And so many weeks we have people that need prayer or that need baptism. And so we keep offering that time uh, just because we don't know exactly when the Spirit of God is going to move. And so as we've witnessed this in, incredible evening with these, these young people, perhaps somebody here wants to respond. And so if you want to be baptized tonight, or if you would like this church to pray over you, now, now is the time where you would do that. And I would encourage you, if that's you, uh, when we sing this song, just to come down here and tell me what's going on. Let's stand and let's sing. Oh, do not let the word depart And close thine eyes against the light For sinner, harden not thy heart Be saved, oh, tonight Oh, why not tonight? Oh, why not tonight? hope you uh, feel the same way. It has been a blessing to see uh, our children and what they have learned. There's been a lot, a lot of Sunday afternoons and, and weekdays as well put into this, so we're glad to see this come to its fruition. If you would take a songbook, we're going to sing one more hymn, not on the screen here. It's number 450. And if you, um, if you were unable to take of the Lord's Supper this morning, uh, it has been left prepared for you at this time. You can exit through these doors over here. It's been prepared in room A113. You know, one of my favorite things, uh, just seeing my own children's involvement in LTC, is how much uh, Bible study goes into this. Uh, of course, all of the events that they're involved in are, are Bible-centered, but uh, we have very strong Bible quiz participants, uh, Bible bowl participants, and uh, so the Bible is really the core of everything they're studying. So I thought it was appropriate to end on a song focused on God's word before we're dismissed in prayer. If you would, let's sing just the first two verses of hymn number 450. 
Give me the Bible, star of gladness gleaming, to cheer the wanderer, lone and tempest-tossed. No storm can hide that radiant, peaceful beaming, since Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Give me the Bible, holy message shining, thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible when my heart is broken, when sin and grief have filled my soul with fear. Give me the precious words my Jesus spoken, hold a faith's land to show my Savior near. Give me the Bible, holy message shining, thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. Would you bow with me, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for uh, the blessing we have of children, uh, our physical family and our spiritual family as well. God, we are so grateful for um, the wonderful young examples that we have here before us who've devoted much of their time, their attention to learning your word better. And we ask that you would bless all those who are going on the LTC trip they would uh, do their very best and more than anything that they impress your word upon their hearts and that they determine to live it out. God, they are a great example to all of us and help us all to remember your word and remember the, the perfect decrees that you have given us uh, and help us to remember the sacrifice Jesus has made for us um, and draw us near to you as we go through each day this week. May we be fully devoted to you as uh, each of us wants to be in our minds. May we be that indeed as well. Please bless us, forgive us of our sins, um, and walk with us as we go through this week. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen.